Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video we're going to cover more summation formulas. And in this case we have functions to our summations. Our summations are going to take inputs based on our functions. So here we have a f of x function which is 4x is plus 3. And our second g function is going to be x squared plus 3x is minus 2. Now for the f function, in the first problem here we see we have the summation from 1 to n of f of i. So what we need to do first is transform the function so that we could get the summation solution. So let's start over here and we have the summation from i 1 to n for the limits and in our input we're going to have the f of i. And so we're looking at the f of x function and we're going to insert the, f, the i into the f function. So when we insert the i into the f function, the i is going to take the place of the x. And so we substitute it in and we're going to have the summation from i equals 1 to n of 4 times i plus 3. And this works just exactly like our previous video. We're going to separate the summation into two components and then we're going to substitute it in. All right? And so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to separate it at the plus or the minus symbol, which is where we separate summations. And so we're going to get the summation from 1 to n for just four i's and we're adding to it the summation from 1 to n for the function of just the constant number 3 and using the summation formulas we could simplify the first one by factoring out the 4 <coughs> so we're going to factor out the 4 and we get the summation from 1 to n of just the term i and to this we're just adding the summation of 1 to n for 3. For the first one we're using the summation formula. So the summation formula for i is going to give us n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And this is pretty standard for what we're doing. What we're going to do then is distribute the term into everything after we multiply it out. For the second term the function for this is just multiplying the constant term times the upper limit of the summation, which in this case is just n. <coughs> so to evaluate this now, what we need to do is distribute the n to both terms. So we're going to multiply these together. It becomes 4n times n plus 1 over 2 plus 3n's. And here we see we could also simplify the fraction, right? So the 2 and the 4 are going to reduce. The 2 and the 4 reduce, and this becomes a 2. So we have 2n times n plus 1 plus 3n's. And now, finally, we just distribute the n to each term, the 2n's to each term. So this becomes 2n squared plus 2n's plus 3n's. And finally, when we add the n's up, we get 2n squared plus 5n's. And that's the solution for the first one here. Now let's move on to the second one here. This one's a little bit more complicated because our input is going to be, our function of the input is going to be divided by an extra term of n. So let's take a look at how this one will work. So instead of just having the function of i, we're going to have the function of i divided by n. And now we insert, again, we insert the i into the function of x and we're going to have the summation of the limits from 1 to n, 4. The numerator is going to give us 4 times i plus 3. And everything here is then being divided by uh, n. So our next step is then to separate these two summations, right? So when we separate them, we're going to have the summation with the limits from 1 to n of 4i over n plus the summation from 1 to n for the positive 3 over n. And now that we have them separate, we're going to simplify them a bit further by factoring out the constants and also the n term. We don't need this in the summation, all right? 
Now, what we want to do here is take the 4 and the n out of the summation. So here I may just take a step to rewrite this so that it could look a little bit more transparent as to what's happening. So we have 4i's over n plus here we have 3 over n. And now <clears throat> we're going to factor out both the constant and the n term because the only things we could keep inside a summation is an i, or in the case there are no i's, just the constant term, not the n term, right? So here we're going to factor out both the 4 over n and the 1 over n for the second one, right? What we have left then is the summation formula for with the limits from 1 to n for just the i term, and this will be adding with the summation of 1 over n times the summation for the limits of 1 to n of just 3. And this works very much the same as the other one did. Only difference is we have this n outside of everything, right? So let's distribute and let's simplify by first introducing the summation formula for the term of i. And here we're going to have n times n plus 1 again over 2. And here we're going to have 1 over n times times n. And now again, we want to join these together. So we're taking the numerator, we're multiplying that by the leading term because it's outside of the parentheses, and we have 4n's times n plus 1 over 2n's. Over here on this side, we're going to have 3n's over just n. And from here, we see the 2n's and the 4n's perfectly divide each other with just the constant of 2 staying outside. The coefficient becomes a 2. And we're going to get, for the numerator here now, we have 2 times n plus 1. And here, the n's actually reduce. And they go away, and we just have plus 3. So finally, then we distribute the 2, and we get 2n's plus 2 plus 3. And that finally becomes 2n plus 5. And that's our summation for the second function. Now this plays a huge role in when you're doing uh, calculus 2. The reason for it is when we're doing the limit as n approaches infinity for Riemann sums, this is the classic way to break down the functions of the inputs, all right? This isn't exactly what you would be doing for the actual integration or the limit process, but it's a good stepping stone to get in there, all right? So let's continue to the third function now, which has higher powers. So this one will be just a bit more complicated. And to add to that, we have an input with an n, not just an i this time, right? In the previous ones, we have just an i. This one's going to have an i over an n, all right? So let's go for the g function one then. So in this case, we have to remember that the g function has an x squared term, and it also has two other terms accompanying it. This one only had two terms. This one's going to have a third one. Be very careful when substituting, all right? So well, let's start with just the problem. And we have the limits from 1 to n for the g of i over n. Now remember, in the g function is x squared plus 3x is minus 2. We're going to substitute the i over n for x everywhere. So the summation remains the same. Limits are 1 to n, and we have i over n squared plus 3 times i over n minus simply 2. And this is going to turn into three summations, right? So we're going to break it down step by step. Everywhere we see a plus or a minus, we separate into separate summation formulas, right? So the first summation formula is going to go from 1 to n for i squared over n squared, when we square each term, right? The next summation is going to be for 3 i's over n. And the final summation is for simply 2, which is just the constant, all right? And now, what we do next is factor out the n's or the numbers if they have an i next to them. If it's just a constant, we leave it alone, right? 
So the first one is 1 over n squared. And here we have the summation for i squared plus the 3 over n comes out. And we have the summation of just i. And finally, the summation of just 2, which is the constant. So we're going to use the formula for each one of these independently. The first one is the summation of i squared. So we have 1 over n squared. And here we're multiplying by n times 2n plus 1 times n plus 1 over 6. And the second one, we have the multipliers 3 over n with the plus in front of it, 3 over n, times the summation for i is n times n plus 1 over 2. And the final one is just minus 2 times n. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify whatever's left over so we could get the solution to this, right? And checking the work here, we see we're distributing. But first, let's simplify whatever we have left over. So we have n times 2n plus 1 and n plus 1 over 6n squared. So we'll separate this and distribute the top. You guys should know how to do the distribution on this stuff, right? Here we're going to combine what we have on tops. And the 3 joins the n, so we have 3n and plus 1 over 2n's, and this is minus 2n's. Simplifying this then, here we know that when we distribute this on top, we're going to have 2n squared, uh, 2n cubed actually, not squared, 2n cubed, here let me clean that up, we have 2n cubed, then we're going to have 3n squared plus n, and this is all over 6n squared. For the second term here, we're going to have 3n squared plus 3n's over 2n's. And then this is all subtracting by 2n. So now to simplify, finally, we're going to divide each term by the denominator here. And we have 2n cubes over 6n squared. We also have this divided by this. So we have 3n squared over 6n squared. Next term is n over 6n squared. And then we have 3n squared over 2n's. Then we have 3n over 2n. And finally, minus 2n's. Now I'm just going to erase some of the stuff we have here so I can fit what we have next. So I'll just wipe this part on the top. And we'll continue with what we have. 2n cubed divided by 6n squared. The 2 and the 6 reduce. So we're going to be left with n over 3, right? So we have n over 3. Next term, they have n squared in common. Those go away. 3 divided by 6, we have 1 half, right? The next term, we have the n's go away, and we have the reduction of n's. So there's going to be one remaining n as the denominator. So we're going to have 1 over 6n. The next term, we have 3n squared divided by 2n's. The n's go away. We just get 3n. 3n's over 2. The next term is 3n divided by 2n's. That's 3 halves. The final term is just negative 2n's. So now here we see we have a lot of common terms. The 1 half with the 3 halves makes perfectly 2. The, three, the n over 3 with the 3n over 2 is a common term. And this is common to nothing as well as this. This is common with these. So here we have these three as commons. We're going to join those three. So we're going to factor out the terms. So this is 1 third n plus 3 halves n for this. And this is minus 2n's. These are all common. The next terms that are common are the 1 half and the 3 halves. And the final term that's common is 1 over 6n's. Now here we have the LCD is what we have to do. This goes over 1. The LCD will be 6. To make this 6, we multiply top and bottom by 2. So we have 2n's over 6. To make this a 6 in the denominator, we multiply top and bottom by 3. We have 
nine ends over six. To make this a six on top of a six denominator, we have to multiply top and bottom by six. This makes negative 12 ends over six. Here we know this is already with LCD, so we have four over two. And finally, one over six ends, right? And then, now to complete it all, two ends plus nine ends minus 12 ends, right? So here, this is going to be just negative n over 6. This becomes 2. And this becomes 1 over 6n. And that's our final term here. Negative n over 6 plus 2 plus 1 over 6n. And this would be our solution. All right? Thank you.